At the edge of Europe, hidden in the mist, lie these islands. The final stop for travelers for thousands of years. Beneath this white fog, they stayed. They built empires that faded into stories. They left behind silent marks, an old tomb or gold deep in the ground. But the mist could not hide everything. They left something that lasts forever. They left their ghosts in the blood. Now, we break through the fog. We begin the search to find the unique identities of the English, the Welsh, the Scots, and the Irish. It all began around 12,000 years ago, when the ice finally retreated. The first pioneers walked across a land bridge from Europe. These were the Western hunter-gatherers. They carried the ancient paternal haplogroup Y2 and the maternal haplogroup U5. Physically, they were a striking combination of dark to black skin and piercing blue eyes. Then, around 4000 BC, the first great revolution arrived. The Neolithic farmers migrated from Anatolia, bringing agriculture and building massive monuments like Stonehenge. In contrast to the hunters, these farmers had lighter olive-toned skin, dark brown eyes and dark hair, and they were generally of shorter stature. They introduced the paternal haplogroup G2A and new maternal lineages such as T, K and J. For 2,000 years, these farmers thrived, but their reign ended in catastrophe. Around 2,400 BC, a new people arrived. The Game Changers, the Bell Beakers, They were descended from the fierce Yamnaya pastoralists of the Russian steppe. They brought the wheel, they brought bronze metalworking, and they brought the ancestors of the Indo-European languages we speak today. A landmark 2018 study published in Nature revealed the brutal truth. In a staggering short period, perhaps just a few centuries, these Bronze Age migrants replaced nearly 90% of the existing population in Britain. The architects of Stonehenge almost vanished from the genetic record. It was a permanent sunset on their lineage. A long darkness fell, and the people who raised these stones were lost to history. In the ancient world, entire peoples could vanish into the mist and leave only faint traces. Today, disappearing is no longer possible. The internet remembers everything. Right now, your personal data is exposed. Your name, address, phone number, and even details about your relatives are being collected and sold by companies you have never interacted with. This exposure fuels identity theft, scam calls, and a digital trail that becomes harder to erase every year. To protect yourself, you need a modern shield. Incogni is a data removal service that tracks down data brokers and sends legally binding removal requests on your behalf. They take back control of information you never agreed to share. But automation is only part of the story. What truly sets Incogni apart is the custom removals feature. If you find your personal information on a specific website, such as a people search site, a leaked database, or an old forgotten forum, you simply send Incogni the link. A dedicated privacy expert then handles the entire manual removal process for you. No forms, no emails, no chasing unresponsive website owners. Just a specialist removing the most stubborn traces of your online footprint, the ones that automated tools alone cannot touch. They cannot harm you if they cannot find you. Reclaim your digital identity. Click the link in the description or visit incogni.com slash history hub 
and use code HISTORYHUB for 60% off your annual plan. Now let's return to the story of the nations. The newcomers carried the paternal lineage R1B, specifically the R1BL21 branch, which replaced the previous G2A and I2 lineages almost entirely. Maternally, they brought a complex mix, including haplogroup H, which remains the most common in Europe today. <coughs> Physically, they were taller and more robust than the farmers, introducing the genes for pale skin and a higher frequency of lighter hair and eye colors. Although the root was shared, the branches grew differently due to the next 3,000 years of invasions that hit some parts of the islands while sparing others. The first major fracture in the unity of the islands occurred in the west. To understand Wales, you must understand its geography. It is a natural fortress of mountains and valleys facing the Irish Sea. For centuries, as waves of Romans, Angles and Saxons poured into the fertile lowlands of the east, the ancient Britons, who were the original Celtic-speaking inhabitants, were pushed westward. They fled into the hills for survival. Wales became a sanctuary. It became a genetic repository of the ancient past. Today, science confirms history. The seminal People of the British Isles study, led by Oxford University in 2015, found that the Welsh population is genetically distinct from the rest of the UK and retains the strongest link to those original Bronze Age Beaker settlers. When we look at the paternal line, the evidence is undeniable. Welsh men possess extremely high frequencies of that ancient paternal lineage R1BL21, often at frequencies of 70% to 80%. Their maternal lineages are similarly ancient, dominated by haplogroup H. While England was being transformed by Germanic migrations, the mountains protected the Welsh gene pool. They are the guardians of the oldest continuous genetic lineage in Britain, and a living link to the pre-Roman world. Across the water lies Ireland. Genetically, the Irish share that same deep foundational paternal R1BL21 lineage with the Welsh. In the rural west of Ireland, the genetic connection to the Bronze Age is just as profound, often exceeding 80% in the male population. But the story of Ireland is defined by an even deeper isolation. The Roman Empire, which fundamentally altered the culture of Britain, never conquered Ireland. The Irish remained masters of their own island, developing a unique Gaelic culture and language in insular isolation. However, Ireland faced a different kind of storm from the sea, one that Wales largely avoided, the Vikings. Beginning in the late 8th century, Norsemen primarily from Norway began raiding Ireland. But they did not just raid, they stayed. They founded the first true coastal cities in Ireland, Dublin, Wexford, Waterford, Cork and Limerick. Over centuries, these Norse Vikings integrated with the local Gaelic population, creating a hybrid Norse Gael culture in the urban centers. They introduced new genetic markers, including the paternal haplogroup I1 and specific subclades of R1 they found in Scandinavia, along with lighter pigmentation traits common in Northern Europe. So, while the rural Irishman represents the isolated ancient Atlantic route, the history of Ireland is marked by a distinct divergence. It is a Gaelic core whose coastal borders were forever changed by Norse city builders.
we turn north to Scotland. If Wales is a fortress, Scotland is a crucible. It is a mixing pot forged in the cold winds of the north. We often assume the whole island of Britain shares the same pre-Roman history. But science tells us otherwise. A major genetic study published in Nature Communications in 2019 revealed that the massive migration that homogenized southern England around 1000 BC stopped short of Scotland. Even 3,000 years ago, the north was distinct. But who were they? When the Romans arrived, they encountered fierce tribes they called the Caledonians, and later the mysterious Picts, or the Painted People. The Picts left behind enigmatic carved stones, but no written records. Genetically, they seem to have been the indigenous Iron Age people of the north, distinct from the south but Scotland, as we know it, was formed by migration. In the early Middle Ages, a Gaelic kingdom called Dalriata expanded from Northern Ireland into Western Scotland. These migrants were called the Scotty. They brought the Gaelic language and eventually gave their name to the entire nation, merging with and absorbing the Picts. And finally, the Vikings arrived here too, but unlike the Danes in England, these were largely Norwegian Vikings. In the far north, in Orkney and Shetland, the genetic impact is massive. Up to a quarter of the DNA in these islands is of Norse origin, marked by high frequencies of paternal haplogroup R1A and I1, as well as specific maternal haplogroups like U5B1B1, which are common in Scandinavia. The Scot, therefore, is not just one thing. They are a complex northern blend of indigenous Pict, migrating Irish Gale, and Norwegian seafarer. Finally, we turn to the south and east, to England. The part of the archipelago most open to the continent, and therefore the most transformed by it. Before the English, there were the Romans. For nearly 400 years, Britannia was a Roman province. They built cities, roads, and villas. Yet here lies one of the great genetic mysteries. Despite four centuries of occupation, the Romans left almost no traceable genetic impact on the modern British population. They were an imperial administration and a military presence, but they did not settle in numbers large enough to change the DNA. When the legions left in 410 AD, the genetics remained largely Celtic Britain. The true transformation began afterward. In the fifth century, the Anglo-Saxons arrived from the coasts of Germany and Denmark. The name England literally means land of the Angles. For decades, archeologists and historians debated whether this was a violent replacement of the native Britons or a small elite taking over. Modern genetics has provided a clearer answer. A comprehensive study in nature, analyzing hundreds of ancient skeletons, confirmed it was a profound demographic shift. It suggests that in Eastern England, somewhere between 30% to 50% of the local DNA was replaced by these Germanic migrants. They introduced high levels of continental paternal haplogroup R1BU106, and I1, along with maternal haplogroups like H1G. Physically, they increased the frequency of blonde hair, blue eyes, and very fair skin in the English population compared to the West. And then, centuries later, the Danes, who were a different group of Vikings, conquered half of England. This area was the Dane law, and it added yet another layer of North Sea genetics the Englishman is therefore the great synthesis, a genetic hybrid born from the collision of the ancient Britain with the Germanic tribes of the North Sea coast. Four nations, one archipelago. 
the Welsh, the mountain guardians holding the purest line to the Bronze Age past. The Irish, the insular Atlantic core shaped by isolation and Viking ports. The Scots, the distinct northern crucible of Pict, Gael and Norsemen. And the English, the great bridge to the continent, a synthesis of Britain and Germanic migrant. The map shows clear borders, but beneath the skin, the story is one of ancient unity fractured by history, invasions and geography. We are all walking palimpsests, written over again and again by the ghosts of those who came before. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, please subscribe and leave a comment below about your own heritage. Join us next time as we continue to map the invisible history of our world.